Hi, I'm Liam, here to share some exciting news about our newest free MPLAB extension, the MPLAB AI Coding Assistant. Together, we'll walk through the quick installation and setup in VS Code, and then dive into a detailed walkthrough of its various features, including chat, some different coding features, and more. I have VS Code open here, and I'll go to the extensions view, and I can search this one here, the MPLAB AI Coding Assistant. From here, you can install the extension, and then you should get a new view here on the left. This is your little quick start page for the extension. If you have an API key for an existing LLM, you can enter it here, or you can use this link to get your free microchip API key down here. I already have one here. So you can just copy that into this field and then click connect and setup is complete. You're ready to start working. All right, let's talk for a minute about the different features first. The coding assistant has three main sources for information. The first is that microchip grounded chatbot. This is trained on our technical product documentation, our wikis, our training and support database, and it's updated regularly to help stay current. The second is a source code trained chatbot. This supports our autocomplete features and some of the inline functions that you'll see a little bit later. And then finally is the vectorized versions of our product data sheets. So this is for device specific details. If you wanna look at peripheral descriptions, block diagrams, register and bit definitions, and then you can even use that information to write initialization and usage code. If it sounds like a lot, don't worry, we're gonna go through it all right now. All right, we've done our setup. We have our API key. Let's look into this coding assistant. So on the left with this view here, we can go ahead and use the chat function. So I'll ask, can you tell me a bit about the features of the PIC32 CMJH product family? This is a fairly new product family, but you can see it's still getting some of the information here about some of those features. Um, what are some of the devices in this product family? You can see I even can look into some of those specific devices. If I want to narrow it down, I might be able to ask, um, can you help me find a device in this family that has two, two kilobytes of RAM? Maybe that's a constraint that I know and I want to try and meet that. Awesome, so I already have a couple of options here. I might end up doing something with one of these. All right, so now what we can do is we can go ahead and create a new project. Oops, that's a new window. I'll use Control Shift P and I'll type uh, MPLAB new. You can see I have MPLAB create new project up at the top. I'll name it um, Coding Assist. We'll choose the default location and then I can enter this device right here. And then I think this is one that I've used before. I already have this compiler installed, so it's able to find it here. And I can create a new project. All right, so we're in this new project. When we started this new project, we actually have that vectorized data sheet being downloaded in the background by the coding assistant for us to reference. We'll get to that in a little bit. For now, let's open main.c and I'll move this view over to the right. I like it over on the right here. Sometimes it's a little bit easier to work with. So let's start working with some coding. We can, in this same chat, uh, talk to our chatbot and say, maybe I want to generate some code. Can you write some code to uh, initialize the A to D converter and UART, uh, sample A D once per second, write oh, to UART, 
and save in an array of 32. And here we go. So chatbot's already able to generate some of that code for us. Nice, and gives us a little bit of a description as well. If I want, I can just click into my main.c file here and use this insert at cursor, and it'll just insert all of that text that we've just generated, all that code into our file. Maybe we have a lot of code here, right? Maybe we want to look at it instead. I can use control L and here I can say, can you check this code for any errors? Now I am expecting a few things here. Yes. So when I insert it, I intentionally put it into the main function and you can see here it's duplicate main function. It's detected a couple of things that we can fix. So here we have a corrected version of the same code. I can use control A to select all of the code and I can just insert it at cursor and override all of that with the insert. Awesome. All right. Let's look at some of the inline features as well. So one of the things we do here is the autocomplete. If I just start writing function to add two numbers, you can see here it's already trying to complete the code. I just press tab and I've generated not just the single comment line, but actually the whole function. And then let's do another one for to average an array of 32 numbers. There we go. So just press tab and I auto-complete that entire function. Let's say we have not just created a function and we're looking at an older function that we're maybe not familiar with. One of the things we can do here is we can highlight this. Again, you can use control L to add to the chat window. And then I can say, can you explain this code to me? And the chatbot's able to actually read that code and give you basically a step-by-step -step summary of what's going on here. This is really useful if you've come back to code after a long time or looking at repos that you haven't looked at in a while, right? And the other thing we can do is we can do some edits in line actually. So if I press Control I, I can edit the highlighted code. And what I'll say is um, comment this code. Click enter and you'll see what it does. Is it actually gives you a little red line. So here it says, let's change the comments here, added a couple here, but you can also see that the code itself is identical and then it just adds the comment afterwards. You can go ahead and click accept on each of these if you wanna make the changes or reject if you don't. But that's a way you can work in line and, and add comments to your code. If you wanted to make changes, you can do that the same way. All right. One other thing you can do is if you highlight and you right click, you have MPLAB AI Coding Assistant. These are a couple of other quick actions that you have access to. Uh, this is just yet more features that we have available. All right, one of the last things I wanted to show was the at data sheet. This is how you use that vectorized data sheet that we downloaded earlier when we created this new project. The AI extension actually got that for us. So in the chat window, we'll go ahead and say, show me the block diagram for the analog comparator. And it'll actually go and show us that block diagram directly from the data sheet. If you want to go to the data sheet, you can also click this hyperlink here. Opens in a browser that opened in the other window, sorry but it'll open it up in a browser for you. So that's just a quick hyperlink. If you want to do some more reading, you can do that. And one other thing I can do here is I can say at datasheet and I can say write some initialization code for the analog oops, comparator. And it'll actually write for us code to initialize that, we can go ahead and just insert that again into our code. 
You'll see it's given us a few extra bits here, like another main. We already have that. We can come here and delete that. But in quite a short time, we've gone to a pretty decent amount of code. As you can see, the MPLAB AI Coding Assistant is a game changer for developers working with Microchip's products. With all the information you need right at your fingertips, you can stay in the zone and keep your momentum. Download it today from the VS Code Marketplace and start coding smarter and faster. You can also check out our help guide on our developer help website, or check out our other videos for MPLAB extensions in VS Code here. Thanks for watching.